Pew pew! This PAX preview is brought to you by Netflix. I'm happy to be joined by Mark Dara, executive producer on Dragon Age Inquisition. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, impressive. Um, I, I mean, this is probably about as distinct from both Dragon Age Origins and 2 as I could have ever imagined. I guess, what was kind of your goal? What was kind of the key feature that you really want to put forward that was going to make it sort of Inquisition and not just a sequel to the other two? Really, I would think the, the biggest thing we're trying to do with uh, Dragon Age Inquisition is make you an actor in the world. Make it so that the things you do are having an impact. So whether that's from combat, where you can look at combat and, and have an impact and see and plan and decide what you're going to do, to building an organization from the ground up and having an impact on the world and what it looks like and how the world is going to be. It's really about making the player an active participant, not just someone that things happen to. So with, obviously, you know, choice and that impact on the world is the hallmark of, of, of a Bioware game. If you look at sort of the previous two Dragon Age, that usually came down to things that happened in, in a point of discussion. So it sounds like what you're saying is just behavior will start to have some sort of ramification. It, it will, will it change the look of the game? Will it change how characters behave towards you? Absolutely. Actions speak louder than words, ultimately. You do have conversations with people and you tell your inquisitorial soldiers to do things or you talk to heads of state. Um, but also, you can just do things that have an impact on the world. You can walk up to someone and, and interact with them in different ways. You can see a combat and walk past it and because you have better things to do. You're too busy. And then come back later and see that, well, maybe you should have stopped and given, given a hand. Um, I mean, yeah, in, in the demo that, that we just saw, you're kind of presented with, okay, do we you know, protect my property, or the, the Inquisition's property, which is the keep? There is a town that's under attack. It really comes across that you're going to pick one that's going to affect the other, but as, as you explained, you're going to lose content you know, either way that, that, that you choose to go. Yeah, like in that case, it might be possible if you play just the right way to save both, to save both your keep and, and the village. But in most cases, yeah, you, you're making choices and one thing is going to be lost, and there's going to be a consequence to that action. How do you explain to the player that they haven't done wrong by doing that? I mean, I, just you describing that, and I know that there's a way I can try to balance both, I can see myself reloading and reloading to try to make it right. But, so how do you say, hey, it's okay that, that, that you lost the village or you lost the keep. Yes, you lost some content, but you haven't sort of harmed your game playing experience. Yeah, I mean, really, ultimately, uh, Dragon Age Inquisition is about the burden of leadership. So one great thing we have is you have these decisions where sometimes it makes you feel like, well, maybe, maybe I made the wrong decision. But the good thing is, something that Bioware has is we have followers. And your followers interact with you. They can you know, give you a pep talk when maybe you need that pep talk and tell you that maybe this was the right decision. Maybe it's what needed to be done. Sometimes you need to do what needs to be done. And sometimes that's not the best thing in the world. Um, let's, let's also talk about the combat. Uh, the shift from Origins to 2 was quite dramatic and I think quite controversial. It looks like you're trying to kind of have both the cake and, and, and the consumption of it. That, you know, we're, we're seeing the, the tactical map now. Yeah, I mean, we're bringing back a, a tactical camera so you can look at the, at, the, at, the, at the combat from above and see what's going on. But something that Dragon Age 2 brought that was really nice was responsiveness. You push the button and something happened. You didn't sort of shuffle into position. Um, and we're trying to keep both of those. This is a game that's, that's, that's more weighted, more physical than Dragon Age 2, um, but more responsive, more, uh, more immediate than Dragon Age Origins, bringing tactics and, uh, and not action, but, uh, but just immediacy. So um, is, is it because it's a next generation game, it's using the Frostbite 3 engine, is that why you're able to sort of do, I think, what everyone kind of wanted from a Dragon Age game from the get-go? Yeah, I mean, really there's two things that, uh, that are coming together here is one, um, is uh, Frostbite 3 is letting us do things we couldn't do before, destructibility, bigger areas, uh, making the world react, change physically. It's something we really just simply couldn't do before. Also, understanding what we're doing better, understanding what we're striving to make. I mean, this is the game we've been striving to make. It's just it wasn't possible for us to make up till now. And it's big. It's big. I, the, the one thing I have to say is just looking at a keep, and this is something that is not an integral home base to the plot, it seemed about as big as like one of the entire sections that you would load into in Dragon Age 2. Yeah, that's probably right. I mean, certainly um, the smaller area we showed you today was actually bigger than all of Dragon Age 2 put together. Um, so it is a big game. Um, we don't have an exact measurement at the moment. We haven't taken out our rulers, but yeah, it's a big game. I'm trying to sort of use my experience with the previous two Dragon Ages and impose that on this, but 
I'm, 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 I'm kind of serving this up with it with underhand, but it sounds like you really can't sort of use the demonstration of the size and how the other games played and apply that to Inquisition. No, because structurally it's very different because you have specific goals, like long-term goals, but we're not really tying your hands in terms of, the, of how you get to those places. You can, there are ways to play the game relatively quickly, um, but also you can just dig in and establish yourself, build the Inquisition up to two heights that you couldn't otherwise do. And so it's really hard to bracket the size of the game because you could just power your way through through the critical path and do what needs to be done as quickly as possible, or you can, you know, build up your your establishment, find the subquests, kill all the dragons, just become the all that you can be, and that's going to obviously take a lot, lot longer than just uh, finishing the story. Um, for obvious reasons, you guys are not being too detailed on what the story is all about. It does follow the events of Dragon Age 2. Um, how are you trying to set it up that you can bring in new players, people that haven't played Origins or 2? Yeah, we're definitely trying to make it so that uh, this is a game that can be used as an introduction. One of the ways we do that is really the, the events that open the game is a giant explosion tearing open the sky and demons are pouring out, uh, threatening the world. So that's a pretty easy thing to introduce a new player to. Demons are bad, you should probably stop the demons. Evil uh, coming, stop evil. Evil coming, stop evil. Uh, then, then we can actually establish the mo politics more, more gradually, as opposed to dropping you in and like Templars to Vinter and giving you all this lore up front. We can actually drip feed it to you, give it to you at a more reasonable pace, only give you the lore you actually need to do what you need, and then let you dig into it if that's something you're looking for. Well, um, I gotta say, from what I've seen today, I think I will be digging. Uh, thank you so much for your time. The game is coming out fall of next year? Fall of next year, absolutely. All right, it's a little ways off, but nicely done. Thank you. You obviously like video games, but would you like a better way to watch television? Netflix lets you stream your favorite movies and shows straight to your home without the need for a cable bill. All you need is an internet connection and a Netflix-enabled device like a PC or Mac, smartphone, or hey, even a video game console. For a limited time, hit up netflix.com slash rev3games for a free trial. Every sign up helps support Rev3Games and gets us to more events like PAX.